All right, hi everyone, good morning. We are gonna have some more fun today. I've been busy upcycling some of my old clothes and making good use of some toilet rolls. So I'm gonna show you what I've created and uh, hopefully inspire you to sort of have a look around your house and see what you can find during this time to start making, you know, uh, some new little bits and pieces that you can use in the studio. So you can be, I don't know, be busy, get creative, have some fun. I don't know, if you like crafting as much as I do, you're gonna love this because um, I have this ongoing argument with my, my daughter. Whenever she comes home from school with an assignment, I've always got to help her, but she doesn't want my help. But in the end, I always end up doing the entire assignment. And uh, I think she gives up halfway through it because you do have to have some form of patience, I suppose, when it comes to, to being creative and crafty. So I'm going to go through just a few little things that I've kind of made um, to give you some inspiration. I was going to get the sewing machine out and show, sew live, but you know, when I started sewing at home, I thought, yeah, this is probably not best done live because <laughs> I'm definitely no seamstress. And uh, my mother, on the other hand, some of you know Mum Sue, she is a very, very creative, talented um, person and an absolute whiz when it comes to sewing. Her mother was a seamstress and owned her own boutique store where she made you know, all of the beautiful little outfits that were in there. And, you know, mum grew up obviously following in her footstep footsteps. And I think, you know, all of the clothes that we pretty much wore as kids were, were made um, by both my mum and my grandma. So I'm lucky to have grown up in that environment and learnt a lot of different tricks. So I'm gonna share some of that with you as well. But yeah, if you're watching, let me know where you're from. Fingers crossed today's live is not going to, uh, to lag or buffer or have any problems like we have experienced, but if they ha they they do please bear with us This is going to be recorded. It is being recorded right now And it's going to be uploaded into the group so you'll be able to come back and watch it later on So yeah, I'm gonna start I think Where should I start Garrett? Let's start down here because this is pretty cool. I like that. One. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I was on Pinterest and I found some really great crazy ideas using toilet rolls and you know we've all got lots of toilet rolls at the moment because the supermarkets are completely empty with from them anyway so I thought what can I do to create something that's a little different little unique and I got my kids involved and we basically sat down and chopped up a heap of toilet rolls hot glued them together I've got the hot glue gun on over here so I'm going to show you how I did it because it was literally so easy um, when I and then we painted them and you can see like it makes such a beautiful kind of uh, decorative piece around the outside they're not stuck together they're just single and placed around so you can move them and create different shapes and have some fun with them that way uh, you could paint them different colors but this was just normal you know kids crafting paint we've always got plenty of that around the house and we've always recycling so I usually just squish these in half now, depending on how many you got or how many little flowers you want to make or as thin or as thick as you want to make them, it depends on how much, um, how wide you cut each piece. But I usually go about one centimetre a piece. So I'll kind of come along and I'll just make a little sort of mark there at a centimetre along. And I use six pieces for each flower but most people would have a hot glue gun. I'm assuming, I can't live without mine. I actually have about four of them. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and it doesn't have to be perfect with things like this. I mean, obviously you could take your time, but yeah, it is a great way to sort of recycle, get crafting, get the kids involved as well. Obviously you don't want them using the hot glue gun. Now my hot glue gun is a little messy, so I'm just gonna work down here and it's this is just got some glue coming out there, so. So I just put a little dob on each one and I stick them together as I make my way around. And like I said, I think six pieces is usually just the perfect amount to make 
one of these little flowers. And what else is great with things like this is if you have paper straws and you want to recycle some of your paper straws, you can make stems out of those and you could cut some leaves out of the toilet roll as well so you could really get creative. Pull those little spider web things off there. So that's how quick and easy they are to make. There's one right there. That was a bit dodgy there. But I love how sort of different and unique they are. And when it comes to kind of placing them around a prop, like I said, you could get really, really creative. And you could, I'll move this out of the way. I've got them kind of daisy chained there. So you could go all the way around like this, or you could kind of sort of separate them up a little bit. And I mean, I've got this up on the table at the moment. Obviously, if this was down on the ground, you could really separate them. But you could have a lot of fun and create something so different. And you could, tr I've gone with a brown here to go with my new canvas backdrop that I painted. Because you see, just by spreading it out, it would give you a completely different look there. Um, so you could have lots of fun. And again, if you wanted to sort of cluster them, you could make different shapes and um, you could have some sort of stems coming up and some little leaves out of paper straws and things like that too. So yeah, that was one idea that I came up with. Um, but yeah, get onto Pinterest and have a look at creative ways to recycle toilet roll, pa toilet roll holders. Okay, um, I do a lot of paper macheing. There's some great recipes online for paper mache. These are two smaller bowls that I've made and then just painted white. And with balloons, and you know, I've always got things like that in my, um, in, in my house with kids. Um, they're pretty easy, but this type of paper mache is, um, it's made out of PVA glue. It is toilet roll, so you do wanna be careful obviously, but I used the cheapest, nastiest toilet paper you could possibly find. What I did was I soaked it in water, so it, so it broke up, so it really, really broke up. And then what I did was I dried it out and squeezed all of the water out as much as I could, so it was still moist. And then I, um, I tore it to pieces. I actually put it in um, a Nutribullet, a blender, <laughs> one of those pulverizing blenders. And then I mixed PVA glue and um, flour and water with that as well. So that made that nice and hard. But whenever you are thinking about making something to put a baby in, what I wanted to point out with something like this is obviously the size. So if I was to put a baby in something like this, I would make it as round as my wooden bowl here. So that's about, again, the distance from my elbow to my, um, to my knuckles there in terms of space. So think about it that way. It's probably, let's get the tape measure out here, or well, the ruler. What do we got? We've got 30 centimetres to about there. So that's about 35 centimetres. So anywhere between 35 and 40 centimetres in diameter is how big you want to make that. Um, and then what I did to get the beautiful sort of creases around the outside and that texture is once it was over the top of the balloon, um, in terms of paper mache, I used cling wrap, glad wrap, and I put that then over the top of this and I pulled it tight to get those lines in it. So you can have a lot of fun with that, but again, Pinterest is gonna give you some great ideas on how you can make different types of pa paper mache in your own type of clay as well. All right. Her, um, <laughs> Trisha, she's from Australia. She doesn't have the Americans buying all of the toilet paper. What have we got going on there, Garrett? I can't read all of the comments that are coming through. I can only see just a couple of them. Oh, what is going on there? Let's just be up <laughs> on the screen. Let's have a look. Okay. All right. There is a bit of a, sh a shortage of toilet paper, but do you know what? The supermarkets are restocking it, so don't worry too much about it. They are making toilet paper. It is coming. I'm noticing it on the shelves. But when you do use it, this is going to be perfect for making props. All right, next thing I'm gonna show you is, I've had this old basket sitting around my house, 
And I was like, it's not really something I'd put a baby in. I have put a baby in it and I've had a little bit of fun with it. Um, but I'm always looking at how I can obviously make something um, a little bit different, a little bit unique. And obviously it is the perfect size um, to put a baby in upright in a prop. And I've got an old jumper here and I've lined lots of different props with this. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the base of the jumper and put my basket inside. And again, these are just my ideas. You don't have to do what I'm doing. I'm just giving you some inspiration of what's possible. And that's because we are all different. So we all wanna create different things and be unique so that our work stands out. I'm not saying don't go and buy props or support your local prop vendors and things like that. What I am saying is get creative. Start thinking about how you can make different unique things um, for your sessions that you know your clients are going to love. So yeah, what I've got here is just a jumper and I've completely gone around the outside. With the arms, you could just tie them at the back to hide them if you wanted to, or you could kind of make a bit of a, a feature out of that fabric off to the side. Okay. Or you could kind of drape it over the top of the baby like that as a bit of a, um, a support as well. So yeah, that's a lot How of fun. What is that? Um, the backdrop. Is this the one that you painted? The one. This is. This is the hand painted backdrop that we did live last week. So you can actually, good point, Garrett, because if you can go to the files section in the group and you're going to see um, a PDF that was uploaded about 19 hours ago. And it's an interactive PDF that Michelle has put together so you can download it and click on all of the images, the graphics in it, and it'll take you to all of the different tutorials and resources um, that are listed on there. I did share it yesterday uh, in the group. That it's a part of the announcement, so you can go and have a look at that. But yeah, the files section, every week we're gonna share that with you. So it's gonna give you some great information and free resources that are available to you. Um, have you ever tried distressed burlap? I've been experimenting lately. Um, and I have. have distressed edges. <laughs> I wasn't very good at it. Um, do you know what else? The um, the bo you boil it. That's apparently how you distress ah. it. So if my mum Sue is watching, she's very good at things like this. She might be able to pop in later and give us some tips on distressing burlap. But what you need to do is get the really loosely woven. Um, Hessian I suppose that's what it's called yeah. it's what we make potato sacks out of really but yeah if you can get the really loosely woven one and then you just continually boil it I'm not sure if she adds anything to the water but to soften it what I normally do then is is pop it into um, like a fabric softener but yeah there are also some great tips and tricks on on Pinterest for distressing burlap but if anyone else has got some ideas and ways go for it all right, the other thing I was going to show you here is I've made a few little bits and pieces here out of some old t-shirts. This is actually one mum made that I wanted to show you because it's based off her pattern and it's an old bit of lace that she had on a, on a top that obviously no longer she no longer wore and then there was a bit of lace off a dress so she's basically just popped them together there, sewed them and then you can just pop the baby in it and it's a little sort of one onesie suit there. But that's the same pattern, and it's the front and the back. And what I do is, because it needs to be a nice stretchy fabric when I'm making it, and this is a great tip that mum said, is that you just make a little cut down the back here, and then you can use, and I've got one of the little outfits here, use string to tie it together like that. So if you're using um, old clothes, look for something that's got a nice stretch to it. This one here um, is one of my daughter's old jumpers and I love the pattern and I thought, how pretty is that? And so I even made a little pillow out of one of the sleeves of the jumper as well and just filled it with, actually, do you know what I did? I found an old cushion um, that belonged to one of my kids that they no longer really needed. So I just took the stuffing out of that and I popped it into there. But that is the same size, roughly, as an A5 piece of paper. 
Um, now, in terms of measurements and things like that, it's going to be slightly different, you know, all over the world. But these pattern pieces, I've asked Mum to send them to me. She's got a little pair of pants, a little onesie, and then a hat. So I've also made those last night, just whipped them up. And, but the fabric is nice and stiff. If you are using a, uh, like an interlock, like a jersey fabric, like a stretch knit, you shouldn't have to worry too much about the edges. Obviously, if you want to be very particular, um, you know, mum would die right now if she saw that I hadn't hemmed the edges. But as you can see, it's a nice soft fabric and it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, if you're going to have um, um, those raw edges, interlocks and nice stretch jerseys, they're actually not going to fray or unravel like, you know, um, normal sort of cotton fabrics and things like that. But I thought that was a little bit of fun, that outfit, that jumper. I don't think she's worn that for about three years. She's completely outgrown it. So it was perfect to, to recycle. And using, and you know, going th at this moment, going through this sort of downtime where we're all a little bit, you know, isolated and staying at home, um, I've been going through my kids' clothes and, and getting things ready to take to the Salvation Army um, to, to hand those over. So, Kelly, can you just clarify for, for us here, because we do have an international audience, oh. is a jumper a sweater? Yes. Sloppy Joe? Do you call them a sloppy Joe? That's also a. a food item I think well, as well this, isn't it? I don't know yeah. this was um, yeah like a long sleeve um, sweater I suppose with a hood on it and the little pocket at the front so it was it's nice really soft like it's a fleecy material as well with a little bit of stretch in it so yeah sorry <laughs> I do um, I do get a bit carried away with some of my words. All right, so these are the little pants that I've made. I haven't ironed them yet, so I've basically just come in, and this is like a, a stretchy T-shirt. This was one of Rob's T-shirts that he doesn't wear anymore. Um, <laughs> I, didn't just, I didn't just steal it, I promise. I did ask his permission. Uh, so yeah, what I've gone and done is, this is the pattern. And a stretch fabric is always going to work best. Obviously, you can see, you know, that leg is going to stretch nice and wide there. Um, and what I did when I cut it out was the bottom of the T-shirt was already hemmed. So you can see there, I just put the pattern down the bottom of the T-shirt. So the legs were already hemmed for me, which, you know, obviously got rid of a lot of that, that work. And then at the top, I just rolled it over and I sewed around, leaving enough space and cut a little hole to put a thread there. So when I'm putting the pants on, I can kind of just draw that string in to make them as tight or as, or as loose as I need to with a little bit of um, a lace there. All right, and then I made the little hat, which is this pattern right here. So it looks a little funny, nice and long that one. And uh, again, I used the bottom of the shirt, which was already hemmed, and traced that onto the paper, pinned that on like that, and then tied a knot. So that was at the bottom of the shirt like that. We're actually gonna pop these pattern pieces into the store, I think, um, if you guys are interested in, in those, because they are you know, fun to sort of make different things. Like I've got a little pillow, a hat, and a pair of pants there out of an old T-shirt, and it literally took me an hour to make. Some people might take 20 minutes. Say maybe. <laughs> yes, I am a perfectionist. <laughs> Garrett's a better sewer than me. <laughs> All right. So yeah, when it comes to making different things, um, I've made a lot of props over the years. I've made, and I shared a video the other day for my beautiful big wings, and they took me a couple of days. I think I, I hot glued between 800 and 900 feathers um, and made the pattern myself and yeah I've also used old scarves and things like that and reinvented those into some some perfect wraps to make some decorative pieces but the idea of today's live was truly just to get you guys inspired if you are going through the kids clothes if you're um, you know getting ready to to hand them out to um, donate them to, to different charities and things like that. If there's anything in there at all that you can use in your studio, have a look at it um, because you will you know, start to create things that are a little different, a little unique, which is exactly what I want you to be. I want you to fill your studio with things that you love and start looking at creating your own brand and style. It is very easy to get caught up in the latest trends um, you know, we have a lot of amazing and incredible prop vendors that would provide our industry with a lot of different resources and um, 
you know, different props and, and materials and things like that. And I'm not saying don't use them, but what I am saying is start thinking about how you can make your work slightly different to everybody else's. That is going to help you stand out in a crowd um, and it will definitely benefit your work. It will make you very, very unique. I don't tend to buy a lot of my larger props from vendors. I tend to make a lot of my own stuff. And it's purely because I want my work to look like mine and I really want to encourage you to do the same thing. You know, we all have our own creative soul inside us and it's really important that we stay in tune with that and we're not, we're not too influenced by what everyone else was, is doing. And I think that's the key, is be you because no one else can be and do it because you love it and your clients love it. Um, and I think that's probably the most important thing. All right, so I am, and this is probably going to be my shortest live, but if you guys have got any more questions. <laughs> Fire away, but there yeah. is lots of lovely comments coming in and people really appreciating the effort and time that you're putting into these lives and so many people are getting a lot out of it. So Well, I'm, I just made myself a couple of new props. <laughs> But do you know what? It is like a lot of people are, are posting in the group and sharing what they are getting out of this and how they're working on their business. And you know what? That's what it's all about. As much as I'm giving to you guys, I am getting a lot out of this as well. It is keeping me inspired. It's keeping me busy throughout this time. Um, and I am absolutely loving it. Obviously, it is a hard time. I do also want to say, I know that there are a couple of members of our group that have been diagnosed with the virus. I want them to know that we are thinking of them. I, I gosh, I just, I hope that they get through this and and it's, you know, not, not a very long recovery for them. So we are thinking of them and I want everybody else in this group and this community to pull together and support each other that is in need and, and just stay as positive as you possibly can because we will get through this. We are strong human beings. We um, learn to adapt and evolve all of the time and we're going to gain a lot out of this, you know, very un... I don't, I don't want to use bad words. <laughs> this very bad time is what I'm trying to say. But use this time to spend it with your family. Spend it working on your business so that you can come out the other side of it. Now, tomorrow is going to be a bit of fun. I'm going to talk all about products. I'm going to show you some products. I'm going to talk about finding the right products for your brand and style. And then the following day, I'm going to take you through a product shoot and we're gonna photograph those products uh, live and show you how I can style them and get those ready for putting into your pricing and information, getting ready for you to pop them into blog posts, pop them on your website under a products tab, all of those things, so you can share them with your clients and, and you know let them know how much you love what it is that you create and provide in terms of those products and services. So yeah. I'm gonna go and do a little bit of work. Michelle has been busy, I can see. She's got the scissors there today as her little icon, <laughs> um, which is perfect for this video. But she's also another crafter, so I'm guessing that she's sitting at home there going, oh, I'd love to show you this, and I know she would so much. But do you know what, if you've got some ideas, do a post, share, a, share some of your um, creative concepts, share some of your upcycling that we can see that might hopefully inspire some other members in the group. But I'm going to go, I'm going to do some more work and I will see you tomorrow uh, in approximately 23 and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> Bye guys, have a great day, take care.